uh, good estimate would be roughly between one to two thousand <coughs> patients with these three types of blood cancers diagnosed every year, and roughly I would think about uh, half of them will succumb to the disease. Now that's a pretty big number, and that's mainly because many of these patients are elderly, so they do not uh, tolerate aggressive treatment well, and hence it's difficult to cure them. Also. Some of these cancers, even though the overall prognosis is good, some of them are still very aggressive and may not respond to, treat, to treatment. And lastly, many of these patients do not have a stem cell donor, which would then, um, they would not have a chance of a curative treatment. But nevertheless, um, with uh, newer advances in treatment, the overall prognosis is actually better. The survival last year compared to say 10 to 15 years ago, I'm sure it's a lot better. If I have to make a choice, I would choose lymphoma to have as a cancer. <laughs> Mainly because the treatment is the mildest, the treatment is the easiest. Yes, it is all still chemotherapy plus immunotherapy involved, but the medicines used fortunately is a lot less uh, intense, a lot less difficult and the chances of a cure is no worse. If anything, the chances of a cure with the lymphoma is actually quite good with uh, the conventional chemotherapy plus monoclonal antibodies these days. It's in the region easily 60 to 70 percent. There are actually uh, newer and newer tests which uh, look at the molecular structure of these cells. So, so much so that you can actually detect minute amounts, what we call minimal residual disease. But unfortunately, these are used more after treatment to, ex to check if there's any residual cancers left. It's not so much as a screening tool. So it's more useful as an assessment of how successful the treatment is. Biological therapies is the in thing now. And there are many of these newer medicines which we call them targeted therapy. Uh, they are oral medications, they are very effective. A very good example is Glivec in chronic myeloid leukemias. In the bad old days, once someone gets a chronic myeloid leukemia, if you don't have a brother or sister to do a stem cell transplant, that's it. It's a death sentence waiting to be carried out. But these days, with this tablet that you just pop in between four to eight tablets a day, and there's a very good chance to, to, to eradicate the disease and patients can survive for, for a long time. Even though we may not still call it a definite cure yet, but to survive uh, 8 years or 10 years on it is quite uh, expected. More and more other medicines of this targeted therapy uh, form are coming on and I could see that uh, in future it's going to be even better. When we talk about stem cell transplants, it's referring to one whole big group where uh, the stem cells can come from bone marrow, cord blood, or peripheral blood. We can also look at stem cell transplants as who the donor is. Whether the donor is from a brother or sister, we call it related allogeneic transplant, or it could be from an unrelated allogeneic transplant, meaning it could be from the public where the bone marrow donor registries, public corporate banks will provide such donors. Last but not least, when all fails, when you don't have any donors anywhere, you can always use your own if your marrow can be cleaned out by chemotherapy. A very good example is actually multiple myeloma, where autologous stem cell transplant, meaning using the stem cells from the patient's own marrow or own peripheral blood has actually improve survival. There are no specific measures that one can take, but in general, we always advise our patients to adopt a healthy lifestyle. Don't smoke, don't drink excessively, uh, eat uh, in moderation, lots of vegetables and fruits are always recommended. Do exercise and try to reduce stress. Now, I know that um, there's no tests that we can do to measure the level of stress, but we do see from personal experiences that uh, stress does matter a lot in uh, initiating cancer or in making a cancer 
not having such a good response to treatment. So we always advise our patients, our treatment must be a total therapy. Chemotherapy or radiotherapy is only one portion. Nutrition is very important. Stress management is very important. Three, the tripod, which I call it.